Thank you so much, right. Mr. Speaker. I rise, I rise today, well, firstly, I wish to advise I'll be splitting my time with the member for Caribou Prince George. I rise today to speak to a serious violation of the privilege, privileges of parliamentarians stemming from this government's refusal to comply with a Conservative motion passed on June 10th of this year. As the Speaker unequivocally stated, the House of Commons holds the undeniable right to compel production of documents necessary for fulfilling its duties. Exercising this right, we order the government, Sustainable Development Technology Canada, and the Auditor General to, sp to submit specific documents within 30 days. These documents, created or dated since January the 1st, 2017, include all correspondence amongst government officials regarding SDTC, contribution and funding agreements involving SDTC, financial records of companies where current or former directors had ownership or financial interests, all conflict of interest declarations, minutes from the board of directors and project review committee meetings, all correspondence between directors and management, and additional documents used by the Auditor General in preparing her report presented to this House on June the 4th, 24. Interestingly, Mr. Speaker, the Liberals were the only party to vote against this motion. Well, now over 30 days have passed since the adoption of the motion, and members of this House, including Canadians, are still left questioning how the government's green slush fund improperly dispersed around $830 million in taxpayer dollars. The lack of compliance in providing requested documents completely undermines Parliament's ability to conduct a thorough oversight, especially regarding taxpayer money management and government programs. Such shortcomings erode public trust and hinder effective governance, something the Liberals are far too comfortable with. In a democratic system, it is paramount that the government remain accountable to the people it serves. The people are not here to serve this government. This ruling should serve as a wake-up call for the Liberal government to respect, once and for all, parliamentary protocols and ensure transparency when using taxpayer money. I want to remind the House of the mandate letter written by the Prime Minister himself to Canadians in 2015, which expressed his deep commitment to our nation and gratitude to those who placed their trust in him. He stated, and I quote, I am committed to leading an open, honest government that is accountable to Canadians, lives up to the highest ethical standards, brings our country together, and applies, get this, Mr. Speaker, applies the utmost care and prudence in the handling of public funds. What an abject failure. What a joke on Canadians. Fast forward to today, we see a stark contrast between those aspirational words and the actions of this government. If the Prime Minister were truly committed to the promises he made, he would stop evading accountability, listen to the concerns of this House, and release all unredacted documents. Instead, his government, his government is taking unprecedented steps to withhold information related to the Green Slush Fund. All this letter does is serve as a testament to his litany of broken promises. The motion follows the AG's damning and explosive report into the SDTC, also known as the Liberals' Green Slush Fund. The Auditor General only took a sampling of the funding and found that 82% of that sample was marred in conflict of interest totaling $330 million. Clearly, there are secrets that the Liberals don't want Canadians to uncover. I wonder why. The Auditor General also found that the SDTC did not follow conflict of interest policies in 90 cases, 
spend nearly $76 million on projects connected to the Liberals' friends appointed to run SDTC, spend $59 million on projects that were not allowed to have been awarded any money, spend $12 million on projects that were both a conflict of interest and those ineligible for funding. In one instance, Trudeau's hand-picked SDT, sorry, the Prime Minister's hand-picked SDTC chair siphoned off a whopping $217,000 to her own company. The Prime Minister knew and refused to stop their friends at SDTC from engaging in this blatant level of corruption. The AG made it clear that the blame for this scandal falls squarely on the Prime Minister's industry minister who did not sufficiently monitor the contracts that were given to Liberal insiders. There's no such thing anymore under nine years of this particular government of ministerial accountability. The scandal is not, near, is not merely about mismanagement, it raises serious concerns about how taxpayer money is being funneled to Liberal insiders. The findings indicate a systemic failure in oversight and governance within SDTC. The AG pointed out that significant funds were allocated without proper scrutiny allowing conflicts of interest to flourish. The implications extend beyond just financial mismanagement. They highlight a culture within the Liberal government that seems to prioritize loyalty and connection with insiders over transparency and accountability to Canadians. SDTC was intended to support innovative projects that would benefit <coughs> excuse me, Canadians. But instead, it appears to have been transformed into simply a tool for political patronage. The fact that $123 million worth of contracts were awarded inappropriately only compounds those concerns. And how do they respond? The only way they know how to, that's mislead and deflect. Just last week, the government house leader posted a video in response to our motion demanding the release of documents exposing the massive corruption, which we called on the RCMP to investigate. Instead of addressing the elephant in the room, the misuse of taxpayers' money, that member resorted to denial and deflection, absurdly claiming that by insisting on transparency and accountability, by handing over the documents, we as Conservatives are somehow attacking Canadian charter rights. This is a blatant attempt to shift focus away from the Liberals' reckless spending and corruption. To clarify for those at home who might be puzzled by the members' comments, let me make it clear the motion is solely about demanding the release of documents. It is not related to Canadian charter rights. And since when has anyone on the Liberal bench shown any real concern for defending Canadian charter rights? Where was this supposed commitment when they invoked the Emergencies Act in 2022 only to be severely embarrassed by Justice Mosley in his federal court ruling by claiming that there were serious violations of the Charter? Okay, je pense d'un appel au règlement, l'honorable député de... Point of order? Mr. Speaker? I don't want to cut off my honorable colleague in his speech, but unfortunately... There is a telephone that is vibrating very close to the microphone, which means that the interpreters are unable to uh, c carry out their work pro properly. Thank you. Uh, just put it on the seat. Yep. Larry, I think you're getting a tip on another ethics scan. Maybe. Maybe I am. All right. On Esperant, hopefully the translation will have it. Awesome. Uh, the Honourable Member for Brantford Brant. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So I was talking about Justice Mosley's decision, clear violations under Section 8, Section 2B. Government claims that they are appealing this perhaps all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada. That remains to be seen. I see that my time is running rather low. We have other scan We have two minutes still? Okay. Um, let's not forget that this is not a one-off when it comes to scandals with this government. And very similar in relation to withholding documents. Winnipeg lab, sc lab scandal, classic example. Parliament explicitly demanded unredacted documents related to the firing of two scientists 
at the National Microbiology Laboratory, reportedly involving national security concerns. Yet again, the government refused to comply with orders of the House. They even took the unprecedented step of suing their own speaker to block the release. Another blatant attempt to cover their tracks, silencing stories that could embarrass them. The government's constant dodging of transparency reeks of corruption, and Canadians are left wondering what other secrets they're hiding behind closed doors. However, unlike the Winnipeg lab scandal, it doesn't appear that a federal election will be covering their tracks this time. This scandal surrounding SDTC is not just about lost funds, it represents a broader erosion of trust between the government and its people it serves. It's a stark reminder of the consequences when transparency is sacrificed for political expediency. It is time for the government to stop the obfuscation, to stop the cover-ups, deliver the documents that this House has ordered. Conservatives will get answers and we will continue to fight for the rights of Canadians who deserve better than this blatant, incompetent, and corrupted government. The ask is simple, Mr. Speaker. Hand over the documents. Thank you so much. Questions and comments. Uh, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, Government House Leader. Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, the ask is very simple coming from the Conservative Party. It is get the documents over to the RCMP. And the member's background, professional background, I would have thought, would have made, raised some flags in terms of concerns about the Charter of Rights. Would raise some concerns when you have the RCMP and the auditor uh, saying or indicating that they are not comfortable, extremely not comfortable, with the tactic that's being used. What the member doesn't make reference to is the internal audit that was done, the audit by the Auditor General, by the questioning that was put forward in standing committees, but rather in its preoccupation of hunger for power, is prepared to do whatever it takes, even if it's overriding a charter. Is he not concerned at all about the behavior of the Conservative Party with that respect to that? The Honourable Member for Brantford Brant. Mr. Speaker, the hunger that I proudly represent as part of this Conservative Party the next governing party of this nation, is the hunger for transparency and accountability, a term that is completely lost on that member, completely lost with this Prime Minister and his front bench, because we've gone down this road time after time after time. There's some misconception that somehow assisting a law enforcement with investigating criminality surrounding this scandal is somehow a breach of charter rights. That is hogwash. The police all the time seek resources to receive information. Parliament, the supreme authority when it comes to releasing documents, has that power. We are simply assisting the RCMP to do their job. We're not directing them to do their job as some might, might, some, might, might, some might argue to the contrary, we are merely assisting them. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Juliet. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, we know that those foundations were created by the Chrétien government in the 90s. <clears throat> they cut transfers to provinces, and the government... Uh, uh, had uh, surpluses, and then to hide them, they created these foundations. The Auditor General in 2005, Sheila Fraser, produced a scathing report uh, concerning accountability in these reports because the government had uh, transferred $9 billion to 15 foundations. So that's a total of $17 billion in today's dollars. And there was no oversight of seven out of nine billion of these dollars. So hasn't this lasted long enough? The deputy to Brentford Brent. I couldn't agree more. And perhaps this member and his entire caucus will think twice about continuing to show confidence in this corrupt government. Because how many more scandals do we have to be exposed to as parliamentarians and Canadians? Let's not forget the very damning 
commentary that was captured on a secret tape between the whistleblower that exposed this uh, corruption and I believe criminality and the assistant deputy minister for industry who claimed that this had the makings of yet another sponsorship-like scandal that brought down the Chrétien and Martin government. So I would hope that all opposition MPs who are listening to my comments and reflect on the words of the Assistant Deputy Minister will reflect upon that the next time a confidence motion is presented to this House to end this corrupt government once and for all. Here, here. And time for maybe a quick exchange, the member for New Westminster Burnaby. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we're supporting, uh, supporting the privilege motion. Uh, we don't believe in uh, supporting liberal scandals any more than we believe in supporting conservative scandals. It's a bit rich for any conservative to rise in this House and talk about transparency. Because, Mr. Speaker, when the Harper regime was in power, the anti-terrorism funding, $3.1 billion with no paper trail, conservatives blocked that investigation. The Phoenix pay system, $2.2 billion. Conservatives blocked that investigation. The F-35 procurement, billions. The Conservatives blocked that. G8 misspending, $1 billion. Conservatives blocked any investigation. The ETS scandal uh, is $400 million. Conservatives blocked each one of those investigations. How can they talk now about transparency when they were so deplorable when they were in government? Uh, I know we're out of time, but the Honourable Member for Brantford Brecken can respond. If that particular member were concerned about transparency and accountability, he'll vote to bring down this government. Resuming debate, uh, the Honourable Member for Caribou, Prince George. Oh, fantastic. 